This is an interview conducted by Stephen Berg with Helen Fulton at the Shippensburg Historical Society on July 31, 2002, as part of the Cumberland County Women During World War II Oral History Project. Okay. And I was born and raised in Shippensburg. Oh, okay. I was born on August the 23rd of 1917. I lived in uh, uh, Southampton, Cumberland, uh, until I was uh, 10. Moved uh, a mile and a half in town. Uh, that was in 1927. I lived here from 27 until 30. Eight, and, and <coughs> then I uh, moved into an apartment on uh, Prince Street. So, uh, and what did your what did your family do for a living? My father was a farmer, okay. mm -hmm. but before the war, uh, they only had the forty acres, and that was pretty hard. So he. Uh, uh, he hauled, um, he had a wood saw and he went around and, uh, and um, sawed wood, firewood for people and cut trees down. Where, where was the farm? Uh, on Baltimore Road. Um, and then you, your first job was working for the shirt craft? Yeah. I, I how, went, can you talk about how you got started there and what you did there? I went to the shirt craft uh, in May the 24th of 1934, just in the summertime. I did that in the summer of 34 and the summer of 35. And then that next year I graduated from high school. But they, they would, you know, hire people for just for the summer. And how did you choose to work there? Well, that was the only place you had to get a job. So, uh, but I set sleeves and, uh, and, the, and the shirts. <laughs> and like, <clears throat> pay was good. Got four and a half cents a dozen for putting uh, two sleeves and a shirt. The quota was 10 dozen an hour. Did you have any experience sewing? No, or? no. You went to work and they, you have to sew on a patch for two days. And then they gave you a small bundle of work. Maybe you might have four, uh, no bigger than four dozen. And, uh, and I think you had six weeks to make your quote. Of, I, I, I don't know. I knew you were, you were required to do at least 10 dozen an hour. And over time, you just built up the skill. Yeah. Well, you didn't. Uh, no, it wasn't so. T you didn't get paid extra for overtime. That was just the same pay all the all the way through. So depending on how much you did. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you said, should we skip the depression question? Pardon me. And did so that was in the midst of a great depression. Well, that that was in. Uh, well, after the Depression, you know, mm -hmm. from 29 to, well, 39, actually, mm -hmm. things didn't, if they, you know, un unemployment was bad. And every, every after I got, a, a re, after I graduated, I stayed at the Shirkraft, and every year you had four to six weeks off, whatever they did. Was that usually in the winter? Yeah, no winter you worked. Yeah, no, real good. So. And then, when did you get married? Uh, I got married August the first of nineteen thirty-six. And what what did your husband do? Uh, worked at the domestic. Oh. Income pump. What was his position there? I don't know what he did. <laughs> <laughs> his his father worked there. But was he, he worked there during the, the Depression, they had worked for him? 
uh, well, he was two years older than I was. Oh, I, I, but when you got married, he was working there? Yeah, he was working there, $6 a week. Okay. And you you continued working at the Shirtcraft factory? Until, <coughs> until um, 1940, uh, 41. My badge number was 74. I still have the badge. <laughs> Did that number mean anything? Or is yeah, just because, a, see, they started out with badge number one. Mm -hmm. so. so the next question I want to ask is, with the bombing of Pearl Harbor, you saw the beginning of World War II, do you remember where you were when you heard about that and how you heard about the bombing of Pearl Harbor? Well, <clears throat> like, we, we did not have a radio that my parents did, and my father came by and said that Pearl Harbor was bombed. So what was Pearl Harbor? <laughs> and he explained what it was. Then, uh, that was on a Sunday. Okay, then Monday, noontime, we were home for lunch, and Roosevelt gave the speech about uh, declaring war on Japan. And, and then we went back to work. But you didn't have a radio. How did you hear this? A lady across the hall. She had a, a radio. And she, we knew that he was going to make this speech. So we're all standing out by her door, and she turned the volume up real loud. So was everyone in the building? Everyone, well, just on our floor. And how did people react when they Well, some speech? people got all shook up and excited because their sons would be taken. But I, I guess I, I didn't get excited. I thought, uh, first of all, it was way over my head that so the war was declared. But then I soon learned what it was all about. Was your husband home for lunch, too? Yeah, yeah. Was he concerned? Because would he be drafted? No, so, I guess, but he never was drafted. Mm -hmm. Get up, probably, <coughs> with, the, uh, with his legs, <coughs> which we knew, but <coughs> we didn't think about it at the time. Do you remember after, in those early days after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, did changes occur in Shippensburg? Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, well, but because everybody's son, everybody's husband, uh, uh, everybody's father, everybody was going to war. And, uh, of course, right away they had the draft, <laughs> draft board, board set up. And I don't know exactly when they did leave, but it, it, it was really, um, well, the, the, the whole town in general was just in turmoil. Uh, you didn't know what was going to happen from day to day. And of course, you had these people that I, I said for trouble before it happened. To me, they made it worse than it really was. But I, I guess it depended on the individual how you took that. What, what do you mean? What would they just... Well, they would be upset and they were crying and they didn't eat and, and uh, I don't want my son to go and I don't want my husband to go. So. They took them anyhow, so you may as well just... Is that when you would run into people on the street? Is that what people yeah. would talk about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were there other changes? Did organizations in town, churches or civic groups... Well, <clears throat> the, the churches made... Uh, well, 
they, uh, uh, I know at the Lutheran Church they had an organization that nipped um, uh, blankets and uh, shawls and things like that. And uh, they will uh, right away, what really got the people ex uh, excited was about the rationing. No gasoline, no sugar, anything that would take to make gunpowder or, ma or make ammunition or anything like that. Uh, Do you remember that affecting you at all? Didn't affect me. It affected a lot of people. So, like I said, I'm a poor one to talk about it because I never realized it was a depression. Because things were just the same as they had been? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that I know as time went on, and, and I had no idea that it was going to last for four years, which is a long time. Did you think it would be over quickly? Or? Yeah. I did. I thought, <laughs> what's your <what's> problem? <laughs> that I learned very quickly that it was very sad, very, very sad. Do you remember other changes, um, like recycling or uh, bond drives here in town? Oh, yeah, they had, um, seems to me, they sold uh, war bonds up at the, on the square. How would they do that today? Well, they, they had a, uh, I don't know exactly how they did that. They would have uh, uh, like a platform up there, and they would have entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, some celebrity would come from Harrisburg or Pittsburgh or someplace, and uh, then they would, uh, if, if it was to um, sell these war bonds. Uh, right away, <clears throat> they started to take, um, what, 1650 off your paycheck? Automatically? And, automatically. Uh, for each, to uh, buy war bonds, they automatically took that off of your check. <clears throat> they didn't take the whole thing off uh, at one time, but they would take so much off a week until you had a bond paid for, then they would send you that bond. Well, I think that if you kept it to maturity, it would be $25. Well, we didn't have any money, so as soon as the bond came, you took it to the <laughs> bank. The banks in Shippensburg would not cash them, and we had to go to Orstown. They wouldn't cash them because they thought it was unpatriotic? Yeah, I don't know, but we had to go to Orstown. Orstown cashed them. And a $25 bond, I think, was worth sixteen fifty. I think that's what you got. But you had to wait like three months to get it. So would crowds gather yeah. when the speakers came to You had to get there earlier. You had to stand in line for an hour and a half to get your bond cashed. But the people that could afford it, they did well because they accumulated thousands of dollars in bonds. Did you know anyone who sold bonds? No. No? No. Okay. Um, the other thing I was curious about, if you remember if there were any um, steps taken for civilian defense or for air raids here in Shippensburg? Yes. We, we had a, a air raids, uh, and I don't know where you went to. But I do know we had air raid drills, and we had blackouts. And at night you were supposed to keep your window blinds down, and the lights were turned down low uh, in town. And were, yeah. there, were there civil defense marshals who'd come around? And yeah, uh -huh. and, and they, they had little signs up where there was air, air raid um, shelters. There was a lot of, it was in somebody's cellar. And I think there was somebody in town that built a big air raid shelter. Maybe Dr. Freeman. Uh, I don't know. Did, did people really think that Shippensburg might be attacked? Oh, sure. I didn't. Know. 
I was, you, I was just not afraid that I, I know a lot, a lot of people were. Okay. Um, was there any other aspect of your daily routine or daily life that the wartime rationing, uh, wartime uh, fundraising, the civil defense, any other ways that it affected your daily life? remember? Well, it, it didn't affect mine. I can't. But food rationing, <coughs> they had victory gardens. Uh, people had gardens that had never had gardens before. Were there victory gardens in Shippen? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Over on Dyton Road, you know, mm -hmm. or, okay. Over by the pond? Yeah, there was a field there from that medical center. Uh, that was, um, they had victory gardens there. Was that a community garden? Would people from town yes. farm over Yes, yes, you, you could go over. They, they uh, marked them off on little lots. And up on Bird Street, uh, there was a big victory garden. And the Civic Club, uh, it's, 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 I, the Civic Club was very, very active in the war. Uh, those ladies made uh, uh, surgical dressings, they, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, knit, uh, ro they made uh, robes for in hospitals, and and. Uh, Volunteers. Well, I guess they volunteered to go to the churches at work. So. Um, we talked about this. Now, you said that when you were working at Shirtcraft, that they converted over to war production. The second year, the first year, they tried to <coughs> that uh, supplies were hard to get. So then. Uh, they changed over to uh, army work, and they made the Eisenhower jacket, the big wool ones, <clears throat> and they made uh, uh, officer shirts, uh, real fine uh, wool. Uh, and of course, that was supplied by the government, so there was plenty of that. Did you? What did you do? Did you work on the shirts or the jackets or both? Well, I said sleeves, so every garment had a sleeve, so it, the sleevers always had jobs. How, can you just describe, was it different working on, say, an Eisenhower jacket than what a, you had been doing before? A regular you? shirt? Mm -hmm. Okay, a regular shirt is cotton, fine cotton. An Eisenhower wool jacket, They ch machines had to be changed, they had to have uh, heavy feed put in, they had to have heavy needles, and the thread, uh, everything was OD, all of drab color, and they soaked the thread in oil, some kind of oil, to keep it from the thread breaking all the time. Uh, I think the stitches on a cotton shirt are something like um, 18 stitches to the inch, and the, on, uh, on the army work, uh, the stitches were uh, 14 inches, uh, 14 stitches to the inch. So therefore, the machines went a little bit faster. That was just on the heavy uh, Eisenhower jacket, but with the with the shirts, uh, when they made the officer shirts. They were fine fabric, so it was put back to the, like, cotton. Was it very different working with wool as yeah. opposed to cotton? Oh, yes, yes, yes. How was it? Your fingers, that wool, uh, you, you had to, the sleeves were over here and the shirt went, went underneath the machine, mm -hmm. and you had to keep your fingers down here and push the work through. But this finger would... Mm -hmm. That that wool, nothing like working your fingers to the bone. <laughs> so it was much harder work. Oh yeah, 
did did other people I guess the whole factory since they were working on wool everybody thought it was harder oh yeah uh-huh. mm-hmm. did people feel like even though it was harder it was for a good cause yeah mm-hmm. did the and see a lot of the people like I said a lot of the people in you know, the factory uh, they quit right away and went to work at the depots as soon as, soon as letter cutting was was um, uh, finished they all went up there because they the pay was higher and they and went, you went to go work at letter Kent, yeah right? I went to every, every, you know when when was that do you remember was it what well, okay. you said you worked at the shirt factory I or? worked at shirt crab I was there 41 I, I must have gone there in January of 42 and so Letter Kenny had just opened up as a base and they were looking for people to work? Yeah, they yeah, they advertised. Do you remember how you heard about positions at Letter Kenny? Or how people uh, would... My brother and all worked there. He he worked there as a guard for the engineers when they were building Letter Kenny. Then when they were finished those guards automatically got a job as a guard. And, you know, I think that's how I found out. But well, you say a lot of the women left from the shirt factories. Did they, they try left the factories and went there. Did they try and keep you at the factory? Did they make an oh, effort sure. to try and keep <laughs> well, you Well, no, they just said, oh, please don't go. But hey, what could they do? They, they didn't pay you the money that they did up there. So what did you, what did you do when you worked at Letter Kenny? I was a chauffeur. That's the only thing I ever did. And uh, I, the first job that I really had was to drive these two officers around to all the factories, uh, Chambersburg, uh, Orstown. There was there was a little factory in Orstown, but uh, any, any place where there was a, a business where people worked, you went, and they. Uh, I interviewed them to find out what their wage scale was. Did you go in with them to these factories? No. You stayed out in the car? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What did they do with that information about? Well, I factories? guess they turned it into the government. I don't know. But I do know that that's how the wage analysis was set up for letter money. So. so just trying to figure out what was the general wages in the mm-hmm. area? It was higher than what you actually made. But it wasn't as high here as it was in Carlisle, and it was still higher in the Harrisburg area. Were there many drivers at? The uh, there was uh, fourteen. Fourteen drivers. Were they all women, or were there? Yeah, all bet. Yes, all bet two. Were there other positions that you could have ended up in? How did you end up being a, a chaufferette? Well, I don't know. It was just everything. <laughs> Did you want to be a chauffeur? No, well, you know, hey, whatever's up there, <laughs> I'll do. Yeah. So what, that was your first job, was driving around and doing the wage surveys. What, what well, other then that of? next one, they put up a, uh, about the, uh, they had a um, mail route. And uh, so you had, to, you had to, to apply for it. They put these jobs on the board. So I applied for that, and I got that. I really liked that. Uh, I was a happy camper driving notes. So. Can you uh, just describe what would a, a, an ordinary day be like as a male? On the mail yeah. route? Yeah. Well, you have to wait uh, at the administration building until they brought the mail from the post office. And uh, then, uh, I don't know who sorted it. But anyhow, you <coughs> you had to take it to the different warehouses down out in the ammunition area. And would you get it in a bag or? A... Uh, no. They 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 had it, it was sort of just like at the post office, like at the sort of the ammunition area. And if you had to go to um, warehouse ten. You just dropped it off at Warehouse 10. Okay. 
Okay, so that's you, right. I did do that, like, I think twice a day. And so you would drive around to all of the different parts yeah, of the base? Yeah, I like that. I, I didn't like going off the base. Was that, did you get to meet people all over the base? Oh, yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to see, you got to see the operation of Letterkenny in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And of course, as time went on, it advanced bigger and bigger, but I... Can you just describe a little bit what things were like in those early days at Letterkenny? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, my personal <laughs> feeling was they had four people to do the job that one person could do. And I either had to be busy or not even be there. And it, it, uh, I just didn't like it because there was, there was too much to me, too much gold bricking. I, I just didn't care for it. Was there a lot of security at the oh, base? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. What kind of did you have to get? Was well, see, there was a, there was a guard at the at each one of the gates, and you had a park a certain parking lot that you had to go to, and uh, yeah, and. Uh, uh, Sometime later, uh, I think they inspected cars because people confiscated some of the stuff. That, uh, but they 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 had guards up there, clear up there, door closed. Did you have to? Did you wear a uniform? Or did I you wear did. Yes, yeah, when I was on that mail route, you wore a uniform. It looked like a black. Everything was so deep. Had a little flare here on So were you actually considered to be a member of the service at that point, or were you no, still no, considered no, 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 uh-uh. no, 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 you just, uh, you just, you just, uh, just employed by the government. But it is interesting that you wore the uniform. Did uh-huh. you wear that off the base, or did you take no, it off? No, no, well, no, you wore it to work. Mm-hmm. Did people treat you differently when you were wearing a uniform? No? No. 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 Now, you said you were also there when they brought the prisoners of war to the camp. No, I was not there. You weren't there? No, but my brother-in-law was there. And uh, (coughs) they they had Italian and German prisoners there. I I definitely know the... The Italian ones, uh, they stayed there, and uh, they did work there. I don't know what they did. Have you ever been to a government installation? Mm-hmm. Well, um, like the they had an office called the Locators. And everything that was in that depot went through that locator's office. And there's numbers put on everything. And uh, there was just, in those warehouses, there was bins from the ceiling to the floor with every screw and nail and hammer, anything that was ever made was in there. But it was very well organized. And if you went there and asked for a ten penny nail, they knew exactly where to send you to to get it. Which that was okay. Did you do, have any other j- jobs that you did at Letter Kenny? No. No, no, no. And how long did you work as a chauffeur at? At the shirt craft. Oh, no. At, at Letter Kenny. At a Letter Kenny. Uh, I, I worked there in January of 42. And I, I, I must have uh, quit in March of 43. March of 43. So you because, quit? Uh, because they, they changed the mail route. We did not have that mail route anymore. They did it some other way. I don't know why. And I was supposed to go work someplace else, and I didn't like it. So, so what did you do at that point? 
I went back to Shirk to set sleeves. <laughs> That's when I worked on army work. Were they happy to have you back? Oh yeah, no problem. Were the when you went back, were they having difficulty finding people to work in the factory? Oh yeah. Every every, every place had that kind of problem. Was that making did that make your job more difficult, the fact No, uh uh-uh. Were they short handed or all the time, yeah. Uh huh. I'm gonna when you have six hundred people working at the Shirkrail and when army when we were doing army work, I think there was about three hundred there. Now where where was the shirt craft located? Do you know where the Orstown Bank is on Oregon Avenue? Mm-hmm. Where those apart where those new uh, uh, Oh yeah. Right There's, there. Is that still the shirt craft there today? It came here in nineteen twenty eight. And it was there until seventy five. And then Lake Lawn Apparel came. And it was there from 75 to... Because there's still a shirt fa- or a, a clothing factory out there. Yeah, but there. that's, uh, they make men's pants. That was not there during the war. So it was where that, that apartment it, complex is? Where the apartment the complex is, yes, yes. Actually, I had one question that had come up. I noticed that your your two sons were born after the war. Was that in part because the war was over, or was that just... No, they, <laughs> they just arrived. Just arrived, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. I was wondering if there was a no, uh-huh. connection there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then I just was, oh. Well, I was gonna say we never touched on the farmers. Mm-hmm. During the war, um, it, it was hard, it was hard for the farmers. And this is a farming community. It was hard for them to get work or have people to come and help to work. And a lot of the farmers' sons were deferred because they weren't needed to work on the farm. And uh, after the war is when farming really progressed in a big way here. Really? Yeah, really took off. Is there anything else about the war years that you remembered that you wanted to, to mention before we talk a little bit about the post-war period? I don't think so. Uh, I think, I think, I think everybody learned, learned a lot about each other during the war. And I think people, uh, I think pe- people mingled more up among themselves between each other uh, because of, I'm sure a lot of the people were lonely. And uh, um, the war was a little, a, a little bit like, um, uh, 9-11. It, it, it was such a dramatic thing. But it lasts, I mean, the, just the duration. So yeah, four, four years is a, a long time. And there was a, a lot of, a lot of the, <clears throat> a lot of the servicemen were gone, especially the Navy. They, they, they were gone for, you know, like 10 months at a time. And uh, that, that was really hard. Would you say that if you were to compare Shippensburg in 1940 and Shippensburg in 1946, how had the town changed, would you say, if you were just generalize? I don't think there was that much change in that period of time. I think the biggest change was the years, a few years after because of the rationing, nobody could go anywhere, and you couldn't buy anything. And now <clears throat> they they did go on the train, and the trains ran. We had like four passenger trains here, sometimes six, and the troop trains would 
go through town, and uh, they had convoys when they moved from one base to the other. And, uh, but, but I really think the big the the, the big change came, like uh, I would say, at least three to four years after after the war. Things things remained the same in town. There, there was no way to do too much because they had nothing to work with and nobody to work for them. Did there seem to have been the fact that so many men had gone off and been in other parts of the country and women had gone off and, and then came back? Did that have a... I saw how great it was someplace else. Yeah, because this, this, this is a, uh, a farming community. And and uh, uh, no, nobody was much in favor of broadening their knowledge that much until after the war, and 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 I think that's what brought a lot of prosperity and new ideas. So. Do you remember anything about the university during the war? I guess at that point it was the college. No. I think it just sort of remained. They, they did what they they did what they could with what they had, mm -hmm. but you know, with everything, with the gas rationing and with the food, and uh, and hardly anybody went to college because the young people that were ready to go to college they were drafted, so it just left the few women mm -hmm. to go. Did you feel that your wartime, because I remember you had mentioned that you had actually gone to New York during the war. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, one time. And I had been to New York a couple times before, <laughs> and I was amazed at the blackout, you know, especially on Times Square. What, was, why had you gone to New York? Well, my father was quite a traveler, so we'd just go on a train and go to New York for the weekend or something. My, my mother wasn't too happy with it, but we did it anyway. Oh, but during the war, what, what had been the reason for you to go to New York? Uh, not during the war. I only, I only went there one time with a friend to... I guess she went up there to bring her brother back. I think he was, yeah, that's when he was wounded, uh-huh, so. And that's when you saw the blackout? Yeah, uh-huh. What was that like? The well, the whole city was really, damn, it looked like the street lights were ca candles, so, yeah, that was, that was really, uh, uh, I know a couple of the chaufferettes, they uh, led convoys into uh, Brooklyn Port of Embarkation, and they said two, you know. But you know, did you ever do one of those? No, I didn't. So, in sort of the, the big picture here, do you feel that the, the war, those war years affected you at all? Changed your life at all? I don't think so. No? Uh, I wasn't in, involved with any, uh, I wasn't involved with anybody that was, that was killed or that was injured or, you know, I, I think it would be nice if you could interview somebody that had a lot of that experience, but I, I never did. Uh, I just was not involved with anything. And like I said, it took a year for me to realize that this is a terrible thing. <laughs> I am not one to borrow trouble. I don't cross the bridge before I get there, which a lot of people do. And uh, I think it must have been very, very hard for your husband to go, uh, I had a couple friends that their husbands went and, and they they had a four or five month old baby and they got killed and that child never knew who its father was and that that's hard. 
do you feel fortunate that your husband was here? And, no. Maybe it would have been better for me if I had experienced something like that, better, but I just never did. Anything else that you'd like to add? Um, I can't think of anything, no. Did we answer all these? We answered all of these questions. I don't, I don't really think so. If you're satisfied with it. I'm satisfied. Okay. Well, thank you very but much. I just feel that if you, if you could have uh, interviewed somebody that was that had, had, had experienced a lot of the hardships that the war brought. Well, this, actually, I'll, I'll stop the. Yeah, OK. Thing, and they had a defect uh, up at the, the turret part this of was it. The, well, the, what was the piece of equipment you were describing? Yeah, yeah. Do you know an M12 uh, tank? Okay. It's, it's a half track. <laughs> OK. Well, uh, at the one side, uh, they, if, if uh, I guess, if they'd run into anything or if there was uh, a bullet or something hit them, uh, this crack, this head part, well, they used to bring them back to Letter County and uh, had to uh, put a, uh, well, an armor plate like four inches on the top of that and uh, uh, some of the uh, some of the men came back with these tanks and they have what they called overseas base shops there too that they uh, uh, a whole uh, unit would be put in one of these big boxes and all the uh, tools and anything they had have to be dipped in some kind of grease and wrapped in uh, uh, cloth and put in these. They were called overseas base shops. But uh, uh, I know <laughs> there have been a lot of men killed because of the defect of that tank. Hmm. So, uh, I went back to Shirt Craft and, and uh, stayed there till it closed and when Leglon came. Oh, right. 1975? Yeah, and Leglon came and, and I worked there for 25 years and it it closed. And, and then you retired? Well, yeah. That I just, would have been 1995? Uh, no. Leg, Leglon closed. I guess the Shirtcraft closed in 65 and oh. Leglon closed in 75, yeah. And, uh, and I worked part time at Burkhart's. And then I had, um, I did uh, sewing at home, and I did that until I was 82. Okay. <laughs>